Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for joining me. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, November 26th, uh, 2018. It is Cyber Monday. So go out there and get yourself some good stuff if you didn't already during Black Friday. I hope everyone had a great weekend. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, this is going to be a general energy reading for today. So that's Monday, November 26th. This is not sign or love specific. This is just whatever spirit wants to talk to us about today. Um, so this may not resonate at this current moment in time. It may resonate uh, later on down the road, or it may be something that has already happened for you. Okay, either way, this is a general reading. So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yeah. All right, guys. So let's just get straight into it. Mm -hmm. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Monday, November 26th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So the first thing I'm seeing is purple. And as soon as I tapped into that, I noticed it and I looked at it, Spirit said, wisdom. So, there's a lot that's been happening for us lately. If any of you have not had the chance to do so yet, I highly recommend that you check out the Ascension versus Mission readings. I did post those, upload those um, yesterday, November 25th. And to be quite honest, they're really great readings for both the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. Now, the, the reading that I'm doing here, this is not just for Twin Flames. This is everybody. But even if you're not necessarily a Twin Flame, uh, I highly recommend you check that out because we all have these Masculine and Feminine or Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine energies within. So you may resonate with that. But there's a lot of wisdom that's being assimilated at this time. A lot of us have gone through some, some real, really, really, really strong purging energies lately. Um, and I, I'm going to be quite honest and say that it started with Venus going in retrograde. And now Venus is direct. She's still in a shadow period. But now also Mercury is in retrograde and he's currently moving through Sagittarius. So there is a lot more purging that's happening. But I feel like at this point, um, you know, with Mercury being in Sagittarius, uh, I'm sorry, Mercury being retrograde and moving through Sagittarius, now we're kind of learning the lessons from a lot of this purging. We are um, gaining the spiritual insight that comes with the lessons that we've learned and the purging that we've gone through. It's, it's almost like at this point, now everything is starting to make sense. Or, or for some of us, maybe it just doesn't make sense at all, you know, but that's okay because I really feel like Sagittarius season is going to help you make sense of it. And mostly, especially if it doesn't make sense now, um, once Mercury goes back direct, which is going to be around December 6th, then things are really then things really might start making making more sense. You may start to understand why you went through certain things, why certain things came back up for purging, that sort of situation. Okay, but also with this purple energy, there is um, this is not just divine wisdom, but uh, psychic activity, psychic attunement, psychic awareness. Uh, I, I feel like. For some of us, for some of us, now it depends on where Sagittarius is in your chart, what house Sagittarius is in. Um, but Mercury going retrograde through Sagittarius may help some of you open up your psychic awareness 
And it actually could be through purging that this happens. That's a, that's a pretty specific message. That's not for many people. It's for some out there. All right. So let's see what we have here for us today. November 26, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. That one didn't come. We're going to take it. The Nine of Swords. Okay. We've got the Universe. Interesting. And the Five of Wands. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull a little bit more here. We did just have a full moon. Oh, look at that. We've got the Ten of Cups. Okay. We're going to stop there. Underneath the deck is the Page of Cups. All right. So the Page of Cups is the dreamer. Um, it is a messenger. Uh, there could be some apologies here needed. Definitely could be some apologies needed. We have the Ten of Cups, we have the Two of Swords, and we have the Ten of Swords. All right. So let's see here. I want to start with the universe. Now, I'm unfamiliar with this card. It is pretty new to me. Oh, wow, I turned right to it. <laughs> but the universe. Looking out into the cosmos, a seeker finally comes into full awareness of her own divinity. In her hands, she holds a fragment of the universe, realizing all that she sees beyond her is already contained within. All that she has searched for was waiting for her own awakening. All that she has strived for was already flowing through her. The journey has come full circle. That is very, very true. Um, for many of us, the journey really has come first full circle. Now, for many of us on a twin flame journey, <laughs> the journey has definitely come full circle. And it's interesting because you have that you're, you're flanked by the Nine of Swords and the Five of Wands with the universe here. So even though for many of us the journey has come full circle, um, you know, there's still some anxiety and there's still some differing of opinion. There, are, What I'm picking up here is that there are some... It's almost like the Twin Flame community has become somewhat cross with each other or at odds with each other so I, I, and i'm not this is interesting because i haven't received any sort of physical evidence of this it's not that i've necessarily experienced this um up front but i feel like there's like a rift between the community because some some individuals in the community have come into union or in the process of coming into union or are still in the energy of, um, I guess, waiting for union is how I want to say it. But then there are others of us in the community that have completely walked away. And it's for those of us that have completely walked away that we have come to this full circle situation here. You know, we've come to a deeper understanding about the situation. And I'm not saying one or the other is wrong. But what I'm saying here is that those of us that have come full circle and have decided to move away from the situation are doing it out of self-love. Because we've we because in our in all in our own individual situations, we've come to the realization that, you know, the love that we deserve, the love that we're looking for, is not necessarily going to be found with this person that we are calling our twin flame. Um, key words of this card, completion, ascension, clarity, success, and arrival. Uh, this card says the universe represents the peak of a soulful journey when the stepping stones of your path join to join in brilliant completion. After all you have gleaned and built along the way, you can now look back on all of your accomplishments and take the time to celebrate and rejoice. It's the ultimate success and spiritual fulfillment that nourishes your heart beyond mere physical needs and limitations. This goes much deeper. You have become wiser, softer, and more awakened, which delivers a newfound awareness of what you would ultimately like to do next. You have worked through the trials and tribulations and have grown in resilience and strength, becoming a powerful co-creator of your own story. This dynamic energy replenishes your confidence and illuminates the future with shimmering possibilities. There is much to look forward to. Now, 
I also want to say that this Nine of Swords, the Five of Wands, this anxiety here is not just outside of us. It's also coming from within us, too, because some of us are in the energy of, well, maybe maybe this is going to work out. Um, is, is, it, is it wrong for me to choose myself and to move forward with my life? The, 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 this is what the Nine of Swords and the Five of Wands is saying. It's saying, with, with the universe in the middle, but what it's saying here is, I've learned so much about this, about myself, about this journey, about the universe, about love, about unconditional love, that I can never really go back to what was in the past. With the Five of Wands here, it's like, but there was a point in life where I wanted this so badly, but now that I've that but now that everything has come full circle, the universe, now that everything's come full circle, there are things that I just can't overlook. This is there is a situation to which I can just never go back to. And so here with the page of cups, I do see kind of an eight an eight of cups situation because it does look like this woman is walking away, is walking through the gates of the unknown into something brand new. And then here on the bottom row, we have the Ten of Swords, the Ten of Cups, and the Two of Swords. So starting with the Ten of Swords, this is a situation that has run its course. The worst is over, all right? You have progressed from the Nine of Swords to the Ten of Swords, okay? I am seeing this as kind of a linear progression. You have the Nine of Swords, which is um, the fear, the anxiety, you know, the illusions, right? You progress to the universe where everything, you know, comes full circle and everything makes sense and you learn so much and now you have the opportunity to create something new, but you're conflicted about it with the five of wands. It's like, how can I leave, how can I really leave my twin behind? That's literally what I just heard. How can I leave my twin behind? Is it right for me to leave my twin behind? But then you remember, you realize the ten of swords, all of the things that went, that happened, between the two of you. And it's not even like you're you're holding resentment anymore, but it's just that the situation is over. There is too much that has been seen and heard and felt and experienced to go back at this point. In order for things to be different, both people would need to evolve, not just one or the other. And in many cases, whether it's the divine feminine, for the most part, it's the divine feminine, but also, in some cases, it's the divine masculine that has reached this point of no return. And it's like, I can never go back to that kind of situation. I still want my Ten of Cups, but that doesn't mean it has to come from this person. But then again, you have the Two of Swords, which is also saying that indecisiveness. It's like, but, but which way do I go? Some of you are refusing to see that you have to let this go. That this is not, some of you are even refusing to see that this twin flame journey is not what it's, it's been made out to be. It's not what everyone has said it is. It is not all about it is not all about a romantic relationship with someone outside of yourself. It's truly about finding union within between the masculine and the feminine. Within you, between the masculine and feminine energies within, okay? So this is where the wisdom is coming into play. The universal wisdom, the divine wisdom that is allowing you to be the dreamer here with the Page of Cups, that's allowing everything to come full circle. It's showing you between the contrast of the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Cups, what it is you do not want, what it is you truly desire to manifest, what it is is what is your true Ten of Cups, not the Ten of Swords, but your Ten of Cups. <laughs> And the only way that you're going to find that is by resolving this inner conflict with the Five of Wands here. 
and releasing all of the illusions, all of the fears, the anxieties surrounding what everybody preaches on this, on this journey. Everybody, first of all, everybody's journey is not going to look the same. Second of all, every twin flame is not necessarily going to come into physical union in the 3D. And I'm going to be the first to say to you, to be upfront and honest about it, I thought at one point that's what it was about. That eventually everybody was going to come into union. But now, having gone, exactly, having gone through what I went through with the universe here, having come full circle, I realized, well, actually, that really doesn't need to happen. Because ultimately, that's not what the true goal, at least from my point of view, that's not what the true true goal of the, the Twin Flame journey is about. It's more about coming into union with the self and then providing a way for others to gain that union within, which is the most part, which is the most important part, excuse me, of the journey. Regardless of actually whether you come into union with your divine feminine or divine masculine or not. It's more about finding that union within and then showing others a way to get there themselves. Showing others a way to raise their own vibration and be whole and complete within themselves. That's the most important part of the journey. If some of you come into union with your divine masculine or your divine feminine, that's just extra icing, extra decoration, extra toppings on the cake. But it's a lot of work. For those of you that are just now becoming aware of the twin flame situation or are fairly new, I want to say within like maybe the past six months, this is something that you really need to come to terms with. This is a major part of the phase, detachment. Being okay with the fact that you may not come into union with this person. Being okay, I mean, for me personally, it was being okay with the fact that I may never speak to this person again. And at this point, I would say I'm pretty okay with that. Because I have found a greater sense of love and union and respect for myself within. And if... And, and, and I've also learned, especially being an empath, I've learned that I cannot change anybody else for them. They need to be willing and able to do it themselves. If they're willing to do it themselves, then I will be here to help them and to guide them. But I can't do anything some, for someone that they don't already want to do themselves. I learned that in my previous marriage, and I learned that here in this Twin Flame journey, even more so. And so instead of holding resentment for the person, now I'm like, okay, well, they need to go down their path in their time, and I just need to continue on mine. And I move forward great with gratitude because ultimately they helped me become a better version of myself than I was in the past. So then we get into this, okay, so this is where the conflict comes in. Well, maybe this person wasn't really your twin flame. Maybe they were a false twin flame. I mean, that's entirely possible. Maybe they were a catalyst. That's entirely possible. But that's not what my guides tell me. That's not what my heart tells me. And when we're getting into that kind of argument, oh, well, you're not really a twin flame, or, oh, that person just isn't your twin flame. They're a false twin flame. They're a catalyst. That's all ego, guys. Because ultimately, it really doesn't even matter. Because what really matters is the journey towards union, towards self-love. So if there's someone outside of you that is pushing you towards this, great. As long as you reach that union within, that ten of cups within, that's really all that matters. Because that's really the end goal. That is how you manifest the life of your dreams. By being whole and complete and within and and in union within because then that will manifest or reflect in your external world some of you 
Some of you need to make a decision. But it's not really about making the decision right now. It's about opening your eyes to something. You're keep, some of you are keeping yourselves blinded purposefully so that, and what I'm picking up specifically for a lot of you, it's so that you don't have to see down deep into what's really keeping you in separation, both internally and externally. You have to look, you have to look at it. So many of us are caught in an illusion still with the Nine of Swords. And this is destructive illusion. These are worst case scenarios, self-fulfilling prophecies. And it's funny because you're just, you're so close to everything coming full circle with the universe. But if you still choose not to look at certain things that are major, because I feel like many of you, you, it's almost like you don't want to reach this Ten of Swords. And I, I, I completely understand what you, why. I completely understand why. Because then you have to face the fact, well, what, then you have to face all of the what ifs. What if they're not my twin flame? What if I'm not a twin flame? What if they're a false twin flame? This, that, and the third. And I understand how painful that can be because... I mean, the energies in this journey are so crazy. So crazy. The feelings, the emotions. I mean, it was, it was one of the most intense situations I have ever experienced in my life. And I'm a pretty intense person all around. But this is something I have never experienced before. And when it finally started to subside, because I finally started to pull myself away from it, I have to say, I, re I have to say, guys, it was incredibly relieving. It was somewhat disappointing, yes, because the intent, the emotions and the feelings were so intense, but they were, and they were beautiful. When they were good, they were, I mean... I don't even have a word to describe it. But when they were bad, they were quite shitty. And the extreme back and forth, I mean, I was so happy at one point to just be done with that. Because I I was hap I was happy with being done with being shot up to the stratosphere and then dropped back down because of the actions of one person. But you see that right there. That is codependency. Being dependent or, you, or, or, or relying on other people to make you feel good. That's a codependent situation. Now, for the most part, the energies felt like that because that was the dynamic. That is the dynamic between the twin flames. And if you guys can come together and balance each other, balance out and then come together, that's great. But for many of us, especially on, in the, on the divine feminine side, They've we've ascended too too far to be a vibrational to be a vibrational match to this person that was or that is your twin flame, and you have to let that go. You have to accept that. You have to be okay with that because there's nothing wrong with that. There is such a thing as free will, and many in the divine masculine section or or collective have chosen not to follow through with this. It's happened for many of us. And that's okay. That's absolutely okay. Nobody has failed here. But I feel like so many of us have just become so rigid and so in the, the, have accepted so much dogma that we've really forgotten the true meaning of what the twin flame journey is. It is not what we believed it to be, you guys. All because our egos wanted to have that satisfaction of having that person be our lifetime partners. When that really wasn't the, 
the full ultimate goal to begin with. It was just the icing on the cake. I'm sorry, the cherry on top of the icing on top of the cake. You know? And many of us have said that for a long time. Union is not the end. Union externally with another external person is not really the end goal. It's the union within that is truly what we are after. And from there, we are now in a position to allow or to help guide others. Twin flames are the guides. We are the first responders. We are the ones that chose to come down here and go through all of this first to help others get there themselves. So this is the wisdom of Mercury in retrograde moving through Sagittarius. This is that purple energy that I was speaking of. And this is going to be a tough lesson or a tough message for a lot of people to hear. And it's funny because a lot there over the last like two weeks, a lot of people, I mean a good amount, every once, every here and there, like, you know, a couple of three, three, four people every day leave my channel. And it's been ever since I've been putting forward this message that this this message. And it's been coming out consistently just about every week in the weekly readings. And I'm probably going to lose a few more after this message. But this is the truth, you guys. And if you decide to move on after this, I wish you well. Thank you for joining me. But this is the truth that all of us are going to have to face eventually. Don't get me wrong. Some of us, many of us may go into union with our divine masculine and divine feminine. But at this point, and I'm just going to say it as it is, at this point, many of us are choosing not to. For many of us, the contract has been voided because having this connection with this person is no longer of service to either of us, really. It's really just become destructive, detrimental, mainly because it's no longer a vibrational match. Even though this is a tough lesson or a tough message to deliver and to hear, ultimately, everything has come full circle with the universe. Okay. Let's get some clarification. I would like to start with the universe. Spirit, please clarify the universe. Everything coming full circle for us. This is the seven of cups. Okay. Interesting. Alright. So we have the seven of cups. Hmm. That's interesting. We have <laughs> the three of cups. Look at that. Underneath the deck is the Six of Wands. Yes, guys, victory. Victory. All right. The Seven of Cups and the Three of Cups is talking about, um, it's illusionary. But there was a lot of illusion around us over this process. There were a lot of different options, you know. Um, you know and, and it was being, and we were kind of ungrounded um, because we were all just so wrapped up in the idea of this one person, so wrapped up in this false fairy tale. But ultimately, we found union, because the Three of Cups is a union card. We found union. And that union, for the most part, well, for everybody, even if you are in union with your twin flame, physically, at this moment in time, 
or you're in the process of coming into it. Like it's like you guys are communicating and things are coming together and maybe you're even making plans. That has happened ultimately because of the union within that you have developed that you have developed. Now, if you have not really reached full union within, then this might be a temporary union between you and your divine masculine or, or divine feminine. The other card that came out <laughs> is the unknown. <laughs> now, this is saying a few things. Um, one, it's, well, it's saying, mainly what it's saying is there's more to this than meets the eye. And I'm picking up a distinct vibe that for some of us, or for some of you, there could still be a chance at union. And I don't want to give anybody false hope, but that's what's coming through with the card. But it's mainly by default, okay? Because this card is about, um, you know, needing to approach something by with a an open mind. Um, also saying that there are some things that are just not meant to be known right now about the situation. And you just have to move forward. So for some of you that are questioning why you would be in this position and need to just move on without being with this person, even though, you know, you've been going through this ridiculously crazy experience, the universe is saying to you, it's really not time for you to know that right now. Don't worry about it. Just keep moving forward on your journey because you've already come so far. You've already either begun or have achieved a great deal of union, unity between the masculine and feminine within. So ultimately, the mission or the path has served its purpose. Keep going. Don't worry about this specific person. Continue to focus on you. Because that's really the only control that you have of this on this situation. Focusing on you. I want to clarify the Nine of Swords next. Please clarify Spirit, Nine of Swords. <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles. Interesting. We have the King of Pentacles that has fallen. Woo! And the Tower. Wow. Wowie, wow, wow. And the Two of Pentacles. All right. The Knight of Pentacles, the Tower, and the King of Pentacles, all on the Knight of Swords. The King of Pentacles is a fixed energy. So this would be, um, officially in the Zodiac, this would be Taurus. Because the King of Pentacles is an Earth sign. Taurus is the fixed Earth sign. Okay? Doesn't have to be that. But that's kind of, that energy is what I'm picking up on here. Conventionalism. Very much like the Hierophant. But there is a realization here. Okay, a lot of the fear that's coming through with the Nine of Swords is over Knight of Pentacles energy. Well, what if, what if I'm moving slowly on this path and doing everything that I need to do and blah, 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 and things just don't come through? And then you get the tower moment here, that realization that, oh my gosh, this person that I've been dealing with is just way too fixed in their ways and really doesn't seem like they're going to change much at all anytime soon. So where does that leave me? For it says the Divine Feminine for the most part because we would be talking about the Divine Masculine here with the King of Pentacles. Someone that is just way too materialistic, cares too much about money, career, the status quo, the family that they already have. And I'm and I don't I don't say that in a derogatory sense. But for many people, or for many cases, the families that they have built have been built on false pretenses, which would be another tower moment for them. But the tower moment here, surrounding these this Nine of Swords, this Knight of Pentacles and this King of Pentacles, it's like and then with the, underneath the deck is the Two of Pentacles, just keeping up the balance, just juggling, trying to juggle, 
for many of you, it's trying to juggle your own desires with trying to remain, quote, faithful to someone that isn't even really being faithful to you, that isn't necessarily moving on the journey the way they would need to for you two to come together. So of course there's a tower moment involved. Because then ultimately, the Knight of Pentacles says, well, wait a second. Something's not adding up here. Something is not lining up. I'm not going to continue doing this work if the person that's supposed to be my counterpart isn't going to continue with me. I'm not looking to get to the finish line and have to double back because so-and-so didn't want to do the work. So then there's the tower moment. And someone decides to stop juggling and to continue focusing on themselves as they continue the journey, keeping on with the mission because so-and-so is just too fixed with the King of Pentacles. And I don't, want, I don't want anyone to think that I'm coming down on them. Everybody has free will, but this is the process. This is part of the process, okay? It's nothing to be ashamed of. If someone wants to stay in their current manifestation, that is fine. But you have to move forward with compassion and say, I hope, I just thank you for everything that you taught me and I hope all is well. I wish you well in your journey. So, next, that takes us to the Ten of Swords. Please clarify the Ten of Swords here. Thank you so much. Good Lord. <laughs> wow. Okay. So now we have the King of Wands. Underneath the deck is the Chariot. We have the Nine of Wands. <laughs> the Five of Wands again. Good Lord. The Two of Wands. And the Ten of Cups. Wow. Wow. The Ten of Swords, which is what all of this fire energy is clarifying. The Ten of Swords is a completion. Nine of Swords is the ending. You have the Tower. That brings in the realization that then takes you to the Ten of Swords. Okay, you have the Two of Wands and the Five of Wands. And now the Five of Wands has come out twice, and so has the Ten of Cups. Okay, but in this moment of completion here, you have a choice that needs to be made. And there's a lot of conflict around it. Sure as shit is. Internal conflict. External conflict. People telling you, oh no, just... Just keep going, he'll come around or she'll come around. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Nine of Wands. I have been through, or we have been through, way too much. We are battered, we are bruised, we are done fighting. Fighting for something or someone that just doesn't want to cooperate. We're done. And this is, I'm, I'm really picking up that this is both between the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. Everybody's situation is different. Now, it could be the Divine Feminine that's going through this the most, sure, but there are still some Divine Masculines out there that are dealing with this from their Divine Feminine. No. Battered and bruised. I have had enough. I don't want to fight for this anymore because it's only hurting me more. And who says that? The King of Wands. The Divine Masculine in all of us. That is healing. For many of us, this is the uh, on the D Divine Feminine side, this is the Divine Masculine who has finally come to terms with some things and is 
has gone through quite a bit of healing and says, no, I'm not going to put you through this anymore. You don't deserve to be put through this any longer. The King of Wands is someone that's going to go after what he wants. Now, this is another fixed energy. This is Leo. But Leo is very protective of their family, of themselves. Very prideful. So it's kind of a perfect energy and, and to, to, to symbolize moving forward in a new direction. But now also, this is a depiction, as I always say, in my opinion, the King of Wands is the depiction of the divine masculine energies in the physical world, in the 3D existence. And ultimately here you have the Ten of Cups again. Now I do want to clarify the Ten of Cups that came out at first, but you have the Ten of Cups. You have someone that, especially with the chariot here, that has brought this masculine and feminine light, dark, good, bad, however you want to see it, these two, these dichotomous sides of them into union, and now they are using that to propel them forward. Toward what? The Ten of Cups. Okay. So finally, let's clarify this Ten of Cups here. Please clarify the Ten of Cups, please, Spirit. Thank you so <laughs> Wow. Wowie, wow. Look at that. Holy shit, guys. Oh my god. This is so beautiful. Okay, underneath the deck, underneath the deck, you have the Three of Pentacles, which is mind, body, and spirit. Self-mastery. And the Three of Cups came out here with the uh, the, un uh, the universe, which is everything coming full circle. Three of Cups is, the u is union of mind, body, and spirit. Three of Pentacles is the three of them working together in tandem. We've got Temperance. Interesting. We've got the Nine of Pentacles, the Ace of Pentacles in reverse, and the Knight of Cups. So, this is an interesting energy. With Temperance now, Temperance is, has been, for a lot of us, has been a Twin Flame card, right? But this is the alchemy between the two opposing sides. This is patience. Many of us have been quite patient. Many of us have come into this place of balance now with Temperance here. And we're kind of, and we're okay being on our own with the Nine of Pentacles. This is the single card. This is the Bachelor Bachelorette card. This is a card of abundance, um, rewards for hard work well done. Now you have the Ace of Pentacles, which is in reverse. This is saying two things to me. One, many of us have closed this door and are not taking or accepting or giving any more opportunities to this same person. But also for some of us, we have this ace of pentacles that's coming in. It's just a little bit blocked right now. And that's because there's still some, a little bit more balancing that needs to happen. But we have the knight of cups. This is an offer. This is for many of us, I really feel like this is a new person coming in to offer this Ace of Pentacles. And it's interesting because I wanted to, originally I wanted to turn that right side up. But I noticed, then I thought about it and I noticed it fell out in reverse, so I figured I would leave it that way. But there is a brand new beginning that's coming here, guys, with the Ace of Pentacles. So it being in reverse is not a bad thing. It just means that it may not be quite time yet. Again, there's still some balancing that needs to happen. But 
but it is going to be your reward. It's coming to, through to fruition here. All in all, this is a pretty intense reading. It's beautiful, though. All right. We're going to get into the oracle section now. So we're going to start with the animal oracle. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The animal spirit guides. Animal spirit deck. Oh, I wish you guys could see the sunrise. It's like, it's like a beautiful crimson red. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I might try and post a picture of it. Hold on. Hold on, guys. I want to see if I can get a picture of this sunrise. Bear with me. <laughs> Bear with me. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No. No. Not a selfie. Sorry, guys. I really just want to get this sunrise because it's just so gorgeous. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Best messages, please, Spirit, for today, November 26th. There we go. Wow. Rabbit and Tiger. So, Rabbit is saying is an energy of um, doomsday energy. The sky is falling. I'm going to read it from the book, but this is an energy of self-fulfilling prophecies. The rabbit talks and talks and talks about the worst case scenario until the one day the worst case scenario just shows up. Boop. But then we have tiger, which is the wisdom of the divine feminine rising. And the divine feminine is a cardinal energy, whereas the divine masculine is a fixed energy. The divine feminine doesn't need, the empress doesn't need to wait around for anyone to fulfill her. She knows exactly what she needs to do to fulfill herself. And she's not going to wait around. She's not going to stop herself from doing so. So we're starting with rabbit. Where are you, rabbit? Bear with me, guys. There we go. Rabbit. <clears throat> Afraid of everything, overwhelmed, frozen. The rabbit loves to remind his friends that someday the eagle will swoop down and eat him. He talks and talks and talks about it so loudly, in fact, that one day the eagle hears and thanks him for the great idea. Rabbit energy is alive when we are scared, most often about the future, and we become our own worst enemy. We spin up a dust cloud of fear and then complain to others that we are lost. Notice your thoughts and words, O oh rabbit. They shape your destiny. When in balance, rabbit is sensitive, a problem solver, and a good listener. When out of balance, rabbit over explains and talks fast. To bring into balance, one must observe a day of silence. And that actually might be really great. To observe a day of silence. Just be quiet. Just be silent and listen to what's going on internally, right? And I am so glad I took that picture because now the, 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 it's not as concentrated anymore. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, the, the, the red, the, whatever, you guys get what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sunrise. Okay, <laughs> moving forward, we have Tiger. And Tiger came out yesterday for the Twin Flame reading, and I, I believe it came out for the Divine Masculine. That's pretty awesome. Okay. There we go. Tiger. Lunar force. Ease in darkness. Feminine energy. The tiger hunts at night, at one with the silence, fearing nothing. This card reminds us to take in the wild darkness, to allow the lunar forces to soothe and heal our spirits. Sensuality, receptivity, and devotion are all heightened in the midnight hour, and the tiger takes advantage of these boons. Spend some time in silence this evening, drinking in the potent calm. There is nothing to fear in the stillness except the awakening of your own power. 
When in balance, tiger is passionate, strong, and sensual. When out of balance, tiger is overstimulated. To bring into balance, one can practice candle gazing. So there is definitely a need for silence. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe, take some time, and I say this at my own risk, <laughs> peril to my own self, but take, maybe say, take some time away from the Twin Flame community, from Twin Flame readings. Spend some time in silence, in meditation, and listen to what's going on within your heart, not what your ego is chattering on about. I feel like ego is a big thing. This is the ego right here, rabbit. Whereas this is your heart or the, the, the divine feminine within whispering softly as the tiger. Now, for some of us, this could be something that was a major realization over this last full moon, which was on uh, November 22nd, the full moon in Gemini. But there's definitely a call for silence here that's needed. Okay, I'm going to close the reading now with um, a card from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. I do want to say the Ace of Pentacles in reverse here. I just looked at it again, and for a lot of us, it is... Um, You're basically holding back your pentacle for someone to come in that really is going to be a true divine match for you. It's like you have, whether you're divine masculine or divine feminine, you have done so much work to generate this pentacle to have to give to someone. And now you're holding back, waiting for the proper time to give it to the proper person. That's what I'm getting right now with the nine of pentacles, the ace of pentacles in reverse, and the knight of cups. I feel like someone could be coming forward towards you, um, offering you a cup, and you in turn offer them a pentacle, or vice versa. That's just for some of you. Okay, here we go. Closing message, please, Spirit. There we go. <laughs> wow. Relief and repair. Card number 36, Ascended Master Mataji and Crimson Cuprite, Relief and Repair. Okay, give me just a second here. 36, card number 36. Did I say 29? 36. I don't know, whatever. Here we go. Relief and Repair. We bring you the blessing of relief and repair. Our warmth and nurturing will restore and rebalance your body, mind, and soul when the light of spirit burns too brightly. Spiritual light is like the light of the sun. It brings life and joy, but too much can burn. If that happens to you, you will feel overwhelmed, overheated, overexcited, or overstretched mentally, physically, or emotionally. We will help you recover and increase your ability to be exposed to spiritual light again in future without becoming overloaded or burnt out. We ask you to soften and relax in our rich red energy now, which nurtures you with the cooling, restorative life force of the Earth Mother. We shall help you naturally discharge excess energy whilst we receive, strengthen, and fortify you with our I'm sorry, whilst we revive, strengthen, and fortify you with our nourishing grace. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Okay. On the path of light, there are many highs, beautiful visions, stunning inspirations, and transcendent experiences of bliss, love, and peace. It can feel amazing. Yet, like the uplifting and inspiring light of the sun, it is possible to have more of a good thing than you can handle at any one time. Overexposure to the spiritual light feels great for a moment and then terrible afterwards. The body and mind can feel burnt out, overloaded, and confused. The great high followed by a dreadful low. 
You may feel emotionally unstable and even overwhelmed by so many inspirations, but with no real plan as to how you can bring them to life without method methodical, practical steps. The spiritual light can help you live your divine destiny, but for it to shine bright and show you the way, rather than burn you, you must learn how to balance your love for the light with devotion and care for your body. The calling in of spiritual assistance is a key aspect to spiritual growth. The energy of your spirit, your guides, and angels is very real and is the equivalent of turning on more lights in your soul house. Whilst more light can make it easier to see what you are looking for, and it, is off, and it is so often right in front of you. If you have too much light going on, especially over a long period of time, you may unwittingly cause the circuits to ignite and burn down the house. You don't want this to happen because it doesn't feel good and it doesn't help you on your path. You need enough light to see and grow by, but not so much that it becomes more important to you than the need to care for and respect your body. The Oracle of Relief and Repair comes with a message about your spiritual growth. You may or may not be aware of it, but you are learning to call more spiritual light into your body, your mind, and your life. Perhaps you have been praying to the universe more, asking for help. Perhaps you have been, I'm sorry, perhaps you have been meditating more often or reading spiritual books and opening your mind to new levels of consciousness. Or perhaps your soul has just been growing, even if you don't quite know why it is happening or recognize it consciously. This is all good. However, your body needs time to adjust to the increase in light. If you just keep going without taking a short break, it would be like continuing to eat and eat and eat without taking time to digest and eliminate the in-between meals. Although you may be eating very good quality meals, in time, it won't matter. It'll just become too much. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, guys. This has been a really intense reading, but it's been a really powerful and transformative one. So I really, I really hope that, you know, this resonated well with you guys. Please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm sending you guys so much love. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me for <laughs> the past hour. Um, we do have happy hour going on tonight. So that would be around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, I think 6 p.m. is a good time. So I hope I look forward to seeing you guys there. If not, then I look forward to connecting with you again tomorrow for our next cup of coffee. Yeah, much love. Take care. Bye.